Hello guys, today let's talk about exceptions in Laravel. But before we do that, a side note, this is my first video on my new MacBook computer, so I hope there's no issue with recording or anything. Let me know if you notice something different. Anyway, exceptions based on the package example of Laravel PayPocket, which I already reviewed on this channel recently, and there are five exception classes. And two questions, why would you use them? And how do you use them? So how do you throw exceptions and how do you catch them in, for example, controllers? And in our demo project using that package, we can deposit, for example, 100 credits to business account, deposit done successfully, but if we want to shop and buy something for 99 and then buy again, there's an exception insufficient balance to cover the order. And this is one of those exceptions, exactly insufficient balance exception. What's inside in the package? Inside is just constructor method. So you would think not much is happening here. Why would you need a separate exception? But first, let's take a look how it is actually used and thrown. In one of the package internal traits called handles payment, there's pay function. And if something goes wrong with balance, it throws insufficient balance exception with specific message. So that's the package part. Now, how do we use that exception in our application that uses that package? And this is our example from Laravel application. We store the shop order. We call that pay method within try catch. And we're catching specific exception and redirecting to specific page with status, which just happens to be the same message that comes from the package. Another example is in another controller of the same Laravel project. We try to deposit, but if that fails, there is a separate another class invalid deposit exception. And if we take a look what's inside of that exception, invalid deposit exception, it's the same thing, constructor. So what's the point of using those exceptions? Well, two things. First, the developer working with the application trying to debug what happened actually would see the exception name, the exception class, which comes from the package. So they wouldn't see a general exception or general Laravel exception. They would immediately know that something is wrong with using that package. So exception names are for developers. And then the second part, the messages. If developer of a package within the exception class provides default exception messages, which are friendly to the end user, then the developer using that package doesn't need to take care of any overriding of the message. We can just trust that the package would inform users correctly in a user-friendly way. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a package. Your exception classes may be inside of your own Laravel application. So your goal is to create the application exception class with readable class name, understandable class name for other developers to use and with user-friendly message to the end user then the developer calling your code which may throw an exception would just need to try catch and proceed with the same message as you provide from the exception class. Of course, it's just one way of dealing with errors and exceptions, but I just wanted to demonstrate to you a practical example. I'm a big fan of practical examples and learning from those. So if you know specific cases of something that specifically may go wrong with quite a big probability in your application, it does make sense to have separate exception classes with their own messages or other logic how to handle a specific exception. What do you think about this example? Would you have done it differently maybe? Let's discuss in the comments below. And subscribe to the channel. I will have more videos about specific package pay pocket with other tips how to use various Laravel functionality based on that package. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.